Hi, I'm Jeremy Fake, Principal Program Manager in the Microsoft Graph team. Today, this quick video is going to show you how you can set up Microsoft Graph Postman collections to call the Microsoft Graph APIs. Um, first, you're going to need a copy of Postman from getpostman.com. Um, they have native clients for both Windows, Mac and Linux. I've already downloaded Postman and have that ready. Uh, next, you're going to need to go to github.com slash Microsoft Graph slash Microsoft Graph dash dash Postman dash collections. And in the repo, there's a very simple readme here that basically walks you through the steps to set this up. So essentially, once you've downloaded it, you're going to need to go and do the file import and select import from link. And then essentially all I'm going to do is go over and import from link and click import. And that will pull in the collection itself which you'll see on the left hand side and then I'm basically going to grab the other link which will import the environment which will appear up here in the Microsoft Graph environment and there you now have kind of the basics to get yourself started once you have that essentially you're going to have to go over to your Microsoft Graph environment here and click edit and then unfortunately it doesn't really work in this resolution I'm going to quickly spam that out a little bit and you'll see that there's a few values that need to be filled in in the readme we explain that the only ones you need to do is the current values not the initial the client id secret and tenant once you've filled those in um, you'll be able to run the get app only access token or get user access token so i've already set up an application here um, and we have a client id and the tenant id readily available inside of the portal.azure.com azure active directory area there's a great blog post that explains how to do this, um, which is linked in the GitHub readme as well. Um, and it also references to a previous day nine post that talks about how you should create your application to make it work um, with Postman or just in general creating a V2 application. So once you've copied and pasted those in, so there's my client ID and there is my tenant ID. And then I'll put my secret in and click update. It's a secret for a reason, so you're not going to see me put that in. And then you can close that window. And then essentially the first thing you need to do is get the access token. Um, so if I just select that request at the bottom here within the on behalf of the user folder, you'll see it's loaded this request. It's going to call the login.microsoft.com. It's loading in that tenant ID. And if I went into the headers, um, you'll see it's going to pass in a body and it's loading in all those other things like the client ID from the variables that you select up here. The benefit of this is, is um, once you've done this, you can have multiple environments and have different tenants selected. Now for get user access token, you'll also need to provide a username and password as environmental variables too. So again, if I went in and clicked here and just expanded it, you'll see that there's username and password you need to fill out. Again, you're not going to see what those are, but it allows you to have those for those environments. And then you just simply click update and we'll be good to go. So now if I click send on this user access token one, once I get that result back, you'll see that it's returned me a nice access token and I can see all the scopes that my current application has. Mail.read, mail read write, mail send, and user.read. So now if I go into the users folder here and select get my profile, you'll see in the authorization tab we're using the user access token that it just grabbed from running that first function. And now if I click send, scroll down, you'll see that we actually get back all the information about the user um, that I used in the username and password. And again, I can run the about me and you'll see that it's returning uh, my about me. In this case, there's nothing in there because I hadn't filled that out. Um, if I scroll further up and have a look at mail, because we have permission to that too, I can select get my messages and click send. And you'll see now that I'm getting all my messages back from my inbox as the admin user in this case. But the nice thing is, is I've actually set up tests here that um, it helps you along. So if you're getting uh, 403s and you're getting forbiddens, uh, we'll actually have in the console what permissions you need. So it doesn't open by default, so you have to do Alt, Control, C or view it from the menu. 
and um, I'll move this on as it becomes more uh, relevant. But um, in addition to that, once we run it, it'll go grab the first message ID it finds in the response collection it got back from here. So now if I go to get a user's message and I have a look at message ID, you see it's been populated based on that previous response. And then when I run that, we'll actually get the individual message ID. So we can chain these things together. And so for if I wanted to um, update a message or um, update a team or update a, a notebook, all those things will work in here. So if I expand the notebooks one and launch the notebooks, we're going to open up the OneNote notebooks for that logged in user using their access token. Um, and if I just open up the console here and bring that into view and click send on that, we'll see we'll get a 403 because my application doesn't have that in the access token scopes. But if I open up the console, I actually have a, a useful note here that explains that I need to go add notes.read in portalizer.com for that application and then grant admin consent. And obviously I need to run the get user access token again to update the access token. So let's just show you how you do that. If I go over to uh, my browser and I'm in my application, I go to API permissions and click add a permission. I select the Microsoft graph and because we're doing things with the user on behalf of the user, it's delegated permissions. And if I type in notes here, you'll see the option. So I'm going to click notes um, for read and read write and click add. Now the quickest way to get these to fix without going into an interactive view is to just kind of grant that at an admin level and just click yes. And that essentially will grant it for all users um, and not require an, an individual user to do it. Again, I'm in a developer tenant, not in production here. There will be much more rigor around this in other ways. If I run this still, it's not going to work because my access token doesn't have that scope. Um, so what I need to do is rerun it. It usually takes 30 seconds, um, but you should see already, um, based on that, that notes.read is already there. So now if I open up the Get My Notebooks and click Send This Time, now I'll get a 200 IK and I'll actually get a list of my notebooks back. And if I run Get Sections here, I'll be able to do that. And just as an example of a post, because I did notes.write, um, I can go create a notebook. And again, the sample will create it as Postman Notebook. I've already created that notebook with this account, so I'm going to go Postman Notebook 1 and click s Send here. And you'll see that that came back with a 201 and it's created it and it's given me the link to the notebook I can go and view in my environment. So as you can see, there's lots to do here and all those messages come back. Um, you will be kind of jumping in and out a little bit to understand what permissions you need to go to add. Um, if you have any questions, please um, Feel free to provide feedback in the it, uh, the issues aspect of the tool. So just inside of GitHub in the issues. And uh, we look forward to seeing what you do with the Postman experience.